Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and today I have a, a fun beer, uh, a style that I find very close to my heart, and it's um, kind of interesting to see a nice interpretation of this being done in America. So I'll get right into it. Uh, I have a Zwickel beer here. We've done Zwickel slash Keller beer in the past long ago um, in the beginning of the show. Uh, if you want a full history on that style, on the, the Zwickel Keller beer, I would recommend going to craftbeertemple.com and doing a little search for Keller, K-E-L-L-E-R, or Zwickel, Z-W-I-C-K-L-E. No, E-L. Z-W-I-C-K-E-L. And you'll get a whole bunch of, of information about the history and stuff like that. Long story short, a Zwickel is a German style of lager that is basically unfiltered. That's the main, unfiltered and unpasteurized. So that's both is pretty uncommon for Germany. Certainly unpast uh, un unfiltered. I'm not sure about pasteurization. I think you still can probably get quite a few unpasteurized beers out there in Germany. Uh, most of the ones that come over to the States, I would think, are, are certainly pasteurized. Definitely in the bottle, you might be able to get some unpasteurized kegs. But uh, it's basically a, a nice, clean hella style lager something like that the, the style of lager isn't usually as important it can be you know medium dark to light and then they they don't take out all of the the yeast in there that's basically what gets filtered out so it's going to be a little bit more cloudy but in return you're going to get a really nice lovely character from the yeast i often get even more breadiness uh, just kind of a yeasty flavor. Sometimes you can get hints of kind of like lemon and stuff like that in my favorite examples. And they're pretty hard to get in the States and they're pretty hard to get fresh in the States. So when I heard that there was a brewery down in St. Louis making a Zwickel and that there was a German brewer who really knew his stuff doing it, I couldn't wait to try it. There aren't too many beers out there that I just am dying to, to try that aren't really just in my local vicinity that I know I'll, I'll eventually get around to. For as much beer as I drink, I know that you know there's a lot of beers and there's always gonna be another one to drink, but the American Zwickel by this brewmaster out in St. Louis was one that I really had been looking for. I finally got a chance to try it maybe less than a year ago on tap and I loved it, and I saw that it was in a bottle, and I grabbed one, uh, not in Chicago, but, um, and I'm, I'm dying to try this beer out of a bottle, uh, and fresh, and, and really hopefully the way that I love Zwickel and that it's meant to be drank. I th didn't button my, my collar. Um, so, the, the brewery is Urban Chestnut. It is a craft brewery out of St. Louis, as I said, and it's very interesting. It was started by two guys from uh, Anheuser-Busch. Uh, one was more of a marketing guy, and the other, uh, named Florian something, uh, is a, a German fellow who is quite accomplished in the beer world. Um, in all aspects of it. Uh, he was apprenticed in a German brewery as a, as a child, basically, uh, underage anyway. He went to um, pretty a couple different brewing schools, one of which was the Weinstefan Academy in Germany, where he got a master's. I mean, that's pretty much the most acclaimed brewing, brewing school that there is. Uh, knows a lot about yeast propagation and just brewing science. Uh, a lot of these guys, when you get up to that level, you know, they're really part scientist um, because there's a lot of biochemistry and stuff going on. So, he brewed in Germany for a whole bunch of breweries over there, including Beck's, went over to Belgium, brewed for uh, Duvel, uh, Duvel's Brewery, then went to London and brewed for Meantime, helped them start up their brewery. That's kind of where he got the idea of, of what a startup brewery could be. And you'll also notice that he was almost systematically doing the three big regions of historical beer. So you've got your German or Bavarian bohemian styles from in, in the Germany, then you go to Belgium, and then you go to England, and that's really it right there. So he got incredibly well-rounded. Also at, you know, production level, like big-time commercial breweries, and also more craft breweries. Still commercial, but craft breweries. He then went to the United States, worked for a, a true, you know, 
the US style craft brewery, learned that side of things, learned what the US taste was like. Then he went to Anheuser-Busch. And there he worked, I think, in their yeast bank, helping you know keep their yeast strains clean or whatever they do there. And uh, also was put in charge of some of those, if you remember those Michelob beers, where they have like, um, well, I think they still have the Amber Bach, but they did, a, I think they did a Doppelbach and a bunch of kind of crafty styles of beer that Michelob would put out um, under their label. And they were pretty darn good. You don't really see them anymore, uh, unfortunately, or for whatever reason, Michelob is really a dying brand. It, it, it's pretty, it's dying quickly. And uh, but anyway, he was there brewing those beers, making some really nice beers. And I guess he and, and a more marketing-oriented guy, or sales-oriented, I believe, at AB decided to open up Urban Chestnut right there in St. Louis. Um, you know, they Anheuser Busch was sold to InBev. I don't know how that might have affected the timing or him wanting to leave. But the end result was St. Louis now had a craft brewery in their city with an incredibly talented and well-educated brewer and it's called urban chestnut and they basically have an idea that they want to take a look at historical beers and then put new interpretations on them and he wants to really hold true to some of these original styles and brew them as you know you really can't find them anymore perhaps and then also kind of take them and tweak them so they kind of have two uh, series there's the uh which one's this this is the reverence and then the oh boy the something else that's r the reverence and the i don't know there's another i forget what the name of the series is but basically one is a a, a kind of a looking forward and playing around with styles uh, where they're taking like the, the most famous one that, that I can think of is uh, a half of Weizen where they put uh, black walnuts in it and crush it up and it's it's really a nice uh, nice drinking beer um, a lot of black walnut in it and and then they have the reverence style which it's much more classic styles like a true German pills or a Zwickel or a truer um, to, to historical standards half of Weizen. so stuff like that um, but really interesting beer if you guys are ever in St. Louis or have the opportunity to uh, get some of these urban chestnut beers you try it out I, I think they are pretty unique and I think um, I'm, I expect big things from them in the future or at least good things I don't know how big they'll be but they'll be good so anyway I've got the Zwickel here um, I've only got uh, I won't do my, my 100% timing pour where I just kind of let everything sit and settle out uh, plus, plus then you won't see how dirty this glass may or may not be um, but I'll let this sit for a moment um, and I guess I probably should have done this while I was talking about uh, Florian and his history in the past um, but it's looking okay I'm just going to keep pouring we'll see maybe I'll get a little too much foam on there Just a bit, which is fine. We'll just have to let it settle. Maybe I will pause and come back with the magic of uh, video editing. I guess it would be the magic of that. And we're back. Magic, ta da, presto change, or whatever magicians are supposed to say uh, when they edit video together. So uh, you can see uh, this beer. Uh, has now settled down. In fact, somebody asked me before um, over email, they were in Europe, uh, I, I forget where, maybe Germany, and they were saying that all the pours there that they were getting from the beers at, at bars had such thick, dense, like rocky heads to them, and, and you never even saw that with craft beer. Why? Why not? Uh, there could be a, a couple reasons for it. Um, but one of them, I think, is that they, if you take your time pouring a beer, it will get like that. If you do a hard pour rather than just slide it down the side and, and just let it have just the perfect amount, that's the fastest way to get a pour. But if you actually pour it hard down the center, let it foam up, go down, pour down the center, let it foam up, go down, and so on and so forth, you'll get a, a, a much longer lasting uh, head of foam on your beer. So uh, here we are here. It's already starting to go down uh, just a little bit, but you can probably see just from here, you know, it's the same color as a lager, but it is a little hazy. I mean, it, it's, in fact, in this one, I can even see some stuff in suspension. There was some yeast at the bottom that maybe I wasn't the most careful to not pour, um, but, uh, you know, just a little, little bit of haze to it. Nice looking beer. Give it a smell. <sighs> 
interesting. I'm getting a very distinct like apricot skin, like like that tartness of the skin. You get a little bit of almost tannins in some of these skins. That's definitely what I'm getting. Also a little bit of that kind of minerality, that gravelly uh, nose that I really like to get in lagers. And yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, that malt, it's like a clean honeyed uh, bread, almost like a, a honeyed um, cracker with just a nice, like very light, uh, uh, some sort of like unsweetened apricot jam that was used before the apricot, that was made before the apricots were really fully ripe. And really lovely smelling. Man, I love this style of beer, so I'm, I'm just gonna go out and say it. And this is up there with with the best swickles I've I've had. I think a lot of it is freshness, you know. I think these beers are meant to be consumed young and close to the source. By the time they get to where we have them, certainly in bottles are usually old. Uh, definitely the freshest and the best swickle I've ever had out of a bottle, hands down. Mm. So, it's just so drinkable. The yeast adds a little bit of mouthfeel, makes it very soft cuts down on that crispness, that kind of bite that you can sometimes get um, from uh, uh, lagers, um, which is not bad. Uh, it's also not very hoppy. It's much more of a Hella style, much more malt driven, very lovely like cracker biscuit, touches of kind of honeyed notes to it, as well as a really nice underlying fruit makes it just so drinkable. Uh, you'd be surprised how such a simple beer can have so much structure and complexity to it when you really dive into it. And I mean, this beer is just like crying out for some warmer weather and some great summertime or even lighter style beer, um, food, you know, like a grilled chicken or even maybe even fried chicken or something like that. Fish would go great with this. I would love a nice piece of white fish with, with some lemon and some herbs to kind of bring out some of the citrusy flavors here. Um, we're sitting, you know, listening to baseball on the radio if people actually still do that anymore. Uh, if they did do it, you know, that's something that people historically did, so they would use a historical historic beer to do it, and that would be the Swickle. Really love this beer. I'm getting into my same range of only giving the same scores over and over and over again. But this beer is truly great. Um, it, I'm gonna go, uh, Ninety-three. I mean, this is a really good beer, guys. Uh, I know it's just a, a simple little lager, but if you guys ever find yourself, like I said, in St. Louis, pick up the Urban Chestnut Zwickel. It is one not to miss. Uh, if you like lagers, I mean, if you're a big stout guy or an IPA guy, you're not going to love this beer. But for what it is, it's done exceptionally well. It's completely clean and well balanced. Um, I really like it. Uh, can't wait to finish it. Um, so that's what I have to get to now. But first, I always like to thank everyone who's left comments on iTunes. I got a couple new five-star reviews that I need to give shout outs for. Uh, store is coming along. Got a lot of great comments and emails about that. Feel free to jump on that bandwagon, bandwagon and uh, send me an email. I will be giving you guys some more information about opening dates, what it's going to look like, what's the online store going to be. Um, but I would really like for somehow us to be able to interact a little bit more even through this and, and maybe let you guys know what I'm going to be tasting ahead of time and maybe even have a club where, I don't know, once a month, once a week, however often you guys want to do it, you know, um, once a month might be good. Um, you get the beers ahead of time and, and kind of watch the show and taste it with me or after uh, anything. Just something fun, I thought. You know, good way to interact. Um, you can also catch us on Twitter and Facebook and all those good socially things. Um, and that's about it, guys. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Um, I love talking about Zwickle, uh, and I pretty much have to talk to it about it to a camera and nobody else because nobody wants to listen to me drone on about this weird style of lager. But thank you for uh, indulging me in that. Um, 
And that's about it, guys. Uh, until next time, I've got some great Zwickel lager to drink, and hopefully you do too. Really hopefully.